Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 23 of the Gab with Gavin podcast. This episode is brought to you by Town Brewery. Go to townbrewery.ca, use the promo code Gavin at checkout, and receive 10% off your order. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Jasmine St. Clair is one of the most interesting people we've ever had on the podcast today. For starters, she speaks five languages. She was one of the most famous adult entertainers in the 90s. She was on the Jerry Springer show, the Howard Stern show. She was a staple in ECW, XPW. She now has her own one-woman show and her own podcast, The Crazy Train with Jasmine St. Clair. Jasmine, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm I'm excited to dig into some of the stories we're going to get into. Thank you so much. I like those little beer. Are those those coaster? What are those that you hold the beer can? And yeah, I don't drink beer, but it just looks really cool. <laughs> They're really cool, right? Yeah, this is this is Town Brewery. They're our uh, they're our sponsor. They're a local oh, local that? beer there. We're at, we're in Whitby, just outside of Toronto, and they're uh, that's where they are as well. A, a exactly. A, I love Canada. Like my one of my favorite actresses. She's really cool, Lauren Hammersley. She's from Canada. She's in the show Virgin River. So I think that's like one of the best TV shows. Like Netflix has some great shows on, but they're not American. Like go figure. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's let's jump into this here then. Like you have yeah. a, you have a connection to Toronto right away. You went to WrestleMania six. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what WrestleMania was with the homeless guy wearing that shirt? <laughs> Which, which, which version of which, which, okay. What part of the story are you up on with my WrestleMania six? I've I've just know you attended one of the most famous ones that ever came to Toronto, a warrior and Hogan. Fast forward to a few months ago, this idiot, this big home. Are you allowed to curse on this show? You you don't hold back at all. You, you be, I can do whatever I want. You do whatever you want. I'm going to curse. Even they say, tell me not to, I don't give a shit. Um, so then this fucking, this, this jerk off, I don't know if he was crazy or what, but then he's in the street, okay? And he's, there's something attractive about him. And, and mind you, okay, I understand that Gavin Newsom in California has released inmates into the street. Now, for the girls listening, these are not like the inmates you see in Shot Caller or like any of those guys that are really hot. These are like just really filthy, boring ones. But anyway, so this piece of shit, like he touches me. And then to make it worse, like I would have beat the shit out of him, but he was filthy. But then he's like blowing kisses to girls. He's blowing kisses to guys, picking up people's coffee. So they so the cops like came for him and they make this like even more interesting when the cops came. One of them I found out was like a Calvin Klein underwear model before. And of course, that's who's coming. And and this girl, she was cute. She was a newbie. And they arrested him. As they're arresting him, I see him with that shirt. I'm like, what the fuck? I said, I bet you didn't even buy that. I said, you probably stole that from my storage. Is that where you got it from? Like, I started yelling at him. And they're just looking at me like, okay, so what is this? I said, I went to that pay-per-view. I don't know how the fuck he got that. And I just went off to that WrestleMania. Yeah, so they just like, okay. Anyway, I'm pretty sure he has my stolen shirt. That's the story I prefer is that it's my shirt that he stole. And then he comes to harass me years later. But yeah, it was one of like going to that WrestleMania, though. I'm sure this is what it was. This whole question or this sentence. It was like it was amazing. It was like being at. um, It was like watching Land of the Giants come to life. Oh, that's so cool. I, I know we, we've talked a little bit before this interview and um, I, I told you that I run like the vintage store. So hearing somebody <laughs> broke in and stole your WrestleMania tees, I feel that I feel that extra. So oh, it's gross. Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of vintage things, but I started um, dabbling again with vintage jewelry, like for men and women, like from the 40s and 20s. Cause that's always been fun. Like I collect vintage Barbies as well from the sixties and seventies, like sixties, not seventies. Cause I, they're not vintage to me from the seventies to everyone else. But yeah. Well, that's so cool. I always see you on my, your Instagram and wherever photos you are popping up and you do have like just kick-ass original concert shirts and that. So just to let you, just to let you know the vintage community sees that. And we appreciate that. That's really, uh, oh, really cool to you. see. They're not from China. They're printed um, in the States. So they're from here. Yeah. And it's sad when you see like these millennials like wearing these concert shirts. It's like name one fucking song. OK, so I saw this guy with a carcass T-shirt on in the street like this a few months ago. Get a real bike anyway. So 
that's like a motorized bike. That's not even a real bike. A real bike is a motorcycle. So this guy has his glasses and like a short hair. He looks like the only woman he probably speaks to is his mother. And he has a carcass shirt on. I did go up to him. I said, so why are you wearing that shirt? Like, do you even know what it is? He's like, yeah, it's a band. And I said, name one song or just one album. And he did. So he really knew who they were, but he had some kind of a boring job. So he had to cut his hair <laughs> and look like a nerd. Uh, well, that <laughs> is so funny. Well, yeah. let's, let's, yeah, I mean, I, I can, well, let's, while we're on this, like some more, something else I found around. I really do. I want to get back into like your early days, talk all yeah. ECW, talk all the wrestling. But while we're rolling here, you've seen some just kick ass concerts. Your first Ooh. concert I learned in my research. Was Black Sabbath when you were ten? Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell the like original. That's so cool. Tell tell me about uh, that yeah. and some other cool shows you may have seen. So, um, that was my babysitter that took me Florentine parce qu'elle parle français aussi comme moi et je suis allée à l'école français quand j'étais cinq ans. So depuis like I've been speaking French since I was five, and my babysitter took me. Um, to the concert. She spoke French. She lived in the building. It was a younger girl, well, young at that time. And my mom like left her to watch over me because she could speak French also. Because a lot of Americans, they speak, they barely speak English. And to have a second language like that, it's a sin to like drop a second language if you have the opportunity to practice it. And um, we went to Black Sabbath. She told my mom. Uh, my mom was fine with that. So I went to the Mob Rules tour. I saw Dio. Uh, that wasn't the last time I saw Ronnie James Dio, by the way. And I think living in Europe, it's made me extremely spoiled because I, like the first time I saw Enslaved, I saw them at an acoustic intimate setting. They had like an acoustic intimate concert at Viglund Park in Norway. And uh, it was very small, but I got to see them do acoustics, which is completely That's different than when you see Enslaved play. Um, I went to my first Inferno festival. I saw, who is it? Immortal, Ghost. Um, I saw some really good bands, but just being in Europe, it was a great springboard to go to festivals. So I go all over the place. Then I was working for Inferno Festival as well. Um, and like in New York in the 90s, You'd never, there was the Ritz, which was previously Studio 52 or 54. I saw Exodus there, Exodus with Overkill. I saw Testament. I saw Metal Church and Wasp. So like Blackie Lawless threw his towel at me. Uh, it's like, I just kind of stepped back because I really didn't want to catch it. But I don't know what girls thought he was so hot. He looks like, he, he looks like, I don't know, Elizabeth Taylor or something now. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. And let's see, I saw the Go-Go's. I've been to a lot of good shows, but if you ever see me with a T-shirt on, it is a real shirt from that era. I have a Rush jersey from that era as well. That's another babysitter show. That's so cool. We'll have to, we'll yeah. have to talk off air about some of those. And if I you ever, yeah, Rush. they let me know. And yeah. if, you ever, if you ever see Jasmine St. Clair in the streets and she's got an, uh, a band shirt on, do not come and do not come and test her knowledge because she knows more than you about right? those. <laughs> Well, even so, like this girl said it was a cool shirt, the Rush shirt. I'm like, OK, yeah, I don't need I just ignored her. Like, I'm not going to even acknowledge you. I'm not even going to tell you that you weren't even a sperm in your dad's <laughs> ball sack when they were playing shows. So I just don't acknowledge young people when they come up to me. They can't even fucking write in cursive for crying out loud. So just don't argue with me and don't talk to me. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Let's uh, so let's back up here before yeah. before you got into you know doing all this work with metal bands. Um, you've done you you interview, you host, you do all kinds of cool stuff. How did how did we get to here? Let's go all the way back to um, you know, when you were in New York. How did? Oh, how, how you up? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to just kind of for anybody who's tuning in and isn't familiar. Like, I think we've probably caught everybody's attention with the sort of the things that you've done and we've talked about that we're going to get into. But how how did we get to this point? I don't know. Like I grew up watching this channel called U68 in New York. It was um, a cable access heavy metal show. Then I was always traveling. I'm an only child. So I was going to London since I was like four years old. Um, so I just did a lot of traveling internationally. You get to see different types of people. And, you know, I used to hang out with metalheads. I mean, that's those were our neighbors. They were metalheads. Um, then when I was in London, 
I would watch a music show every Saturday or Friday called Top of the Pops. So I'd learn like more about all these really cool bands out there. Then we'd shop a lot at these sort of like off the beaten path type of stores. And that's where I started getting vinyl. Like I'd start getting really old things. Like that's when I started, um, like I wasn't really much, I wasn't a teenager yet. And I was collecting like black metal vinyls at that time, like mayhem and, so cool. <laughs> and Burzum, things like that. Um, so it all stemmed from there and just going to school to private schools and so forth. Like you have all types of people and cliques. Uh, everyone thinks they're so cool, but I always hung out with the metalheads because so they're the cool. coolest. <laughs> Hell yeah. And it's a, I yeah. Drank and have a wine cooler. I, wine coolers are disgusting. I had like, I never got amused or like, I never liked drinking that much. I didn't get what the big deal was. I had like a berry wine cooler when we were listening to Maiden on a boombox. I'm like, okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, New York was a great time back then for concerts. I saw like Megadeth with Sanctuary and Warlock. Um, you see Danzig. But it was a great time for shows. And I feel now there aren't, I mean, it's it's hard to go to a good show, not just because of this, this whatever, it's, COVID, yeah. this bullshit, but it's just, I mean, here we are listening to some asshole who fucked up the AIDS crisis in the 80s. You know, I had COVID. It knocked me on my ass for three days, but it's like, it's a fucking common cold and I'm healthy. So yeah, I got knocked on my ass for three days. Big deal. I'm fine. And um you know, it's just, I love going to concerts. I think it takes, a, it really takes away part of my life force, um, not going to as many festivals, but when they are back and running, I am going to go back to Inferno and to my favorite festival in England is Bloodstock. And that's like one of the best run festivals. They're really nice people too. And uh, one of one of the owners is like a total babe bombshell and boss woman, this girl, Vicky. So she she does an amazing job of running the festival. They have good bands too. Hell yeah. Well, that's awesome. I hope, I hope everything <laughs> yeah. gets back up and running. And I know that's your, your passion and your, yeah. your love. So I, I really hope that gets back up and running and you get to just excel at that some more. Yeah. But, go, yeah. Going to shows and head banging. Exactly. But it's just, you know, it's an, I'm like things that are things that have cult followings usually tend to be more popular, not because they're underground, but they're just, there's something about them that draws people in. Like, I always mm -hmm. tell people like ECW wrestling was a cult with very loyal followers. Absolutely. When things are different and things are like unusual and like touches on chat, like it goes into these weird realms. It always gets a good following and it always has a loyal following, not necessarily if people would want to, you know, go have dinner with, but yeah. Well, that's, that's very much, Jasmine St. Clair, no, to kind, yeah. of, kind of, kind of away from the beaten path, kind of niche, uh, kind of cult following. That's kind of always yeah. been your, your MO. Yeah. I've always had like really strong followers because they, they go wherever I go and it's, it's a crazy, it's a cult following. I call it that. So I basically, I, I can call myself a cult leader at this point. Um, I aspire to be a cult leader, the cult of Jasmine. Yeah. Um, it's it's been wild you know you just never see yourself doing these things when you're younger when i was younger like i didn't know what i really wanted to do i just know that i spoke foreign languages um i like performing on stage because i was doing improv uh that was just a cult on its own right mm -hmm. there uh, so i was a cult member when i was a kid i was brainwashed um I didn't know what I want. I know that I do know that like in a few years, I'd like to go back to Europe and work on some TV shows there. Um, and just to have my one woman show going. The thing is with my show, I could do my show in five different languages. So it's one of those things where it's set up to be successful mm -hmm. in other countries as well. Um, I guess like when I was at Second City in California, there was this show, this workshop called Putting Together Your Own One Person Show. And I took it. But I was way advanced for that. But um, then it just when I found out that the person who was running the workshop, like she had a show called Suddenly Mum, which was great. But why? So you'd get paid four thousand dollars to go to Poland for the weekend to do your freaking show. And like, no, no, like disrespect her, but no one even really knew who she was. Um, and she has a great show. So I'm like, OK, that's interesting. So imagine if I could get paid two to four thousand dollars just to go to France or maybe 
to Timbuktu or Greece or somewhere or Spain to do my show. And it's already like a dream. (laughs) And you've already got the, you know how to speak the languages. Yeah. You're right. It seems, seems perfect. Yeah. So that's my goal. Um, I don't even know how he got to goals, but yeah, that's it. And just no, like, for sure. No, this yeah. is awesome. We're, 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 I feel like we're, um, we're kind all of all over the place. I do that. No, but yeah. it's awesome. It's, it's the crazy train, <laughs> right? No, you should see it in the morning. What happens There's some episodes where we've recorded them early in the morning. Cause we recorded a bunch of episodes before the new year that are going to come out. That is now coming out. But I, the times when he's caught me early in the morning, I went off the rails, like literally for sure. Like when we did to the extreme, that episode, I was, it was like, nine or 10 in the morning. And I was, woo. but uh, being in New York city in like the eighties, I think was a really, it's a good time. People think it was dangerous and stuff, but it, it, it had a lot of character to it. Like mm. I missed the crime and prostitution of times square. I think that that needs to be brought back to scare, to scare the millennials, not the bad crime that's going on, like all the craziness, but like, I thought it was perfectly fine the way it was before with all the peep shows and that grind, the whole grittiness, and you just kind of stay away from there, you know. But crime didn't really leave that area then. Well, New York then was iconic, right? Like that's yeah, it's yeah, a whole different time. So let's let's what we're talking about. We're we're in New York for this time. This is where you are. You're you're going to school, and you're also dancing. That that's that's correct. I was at Columbia University. Yeah, I was like, okay, I was doing a few things. I was dealing with vintage toys and collectibles on the weekend. Awesome. And I love it. And then some of those toy dealers came into the club I was working at. Um, then I broke a glass in a girl's face and I got fired. <laughs> and then I went to work at another club. And I mean, it's, it's like that shit happens. It's just a normal thing. Um, yeah. I normal, think normal, was- normal for you. I, we don't we don't have that too much at the vintage store. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think it's one of these things where, you, you know, you get girls that come in from New Jersey into Manhattan. You mm-hmm. don't you don't pull your bullshit Jersey shit in Manhattan. So it just doesn't go. So so Um, you're, so you're in school. um, You're you're working as a dancer, you become feature dancer, and this is all leading you into, uh, into the adult industry. Well, yeah. I mean, it was just kind of a cool thing to do at the time. It seemed like, you know, I never, everyone, anyone that knows me, knows me, knows I've never had an issue with drugs and I don't need to. Cause I think if I did, I think my drug is my insanity. Like my madness has been done cold, stone cold sober. And that's the whole beauty of it, because then you always have this stuff in the back of your mind and you remember it. Um, so, uh, yeah. And, you know, I just you, you don't know what to expect, but I never really like saw myself as anything or anyone famous or anything like that, because I think at the end of the day, when you're not living that whole lifestyle, because I never lived around people in the film business. Mm-hmm. Um, I never mixed and mingled with them. At that time, I lived in uh, I lived in two places. I was um, I was living in South Central LA near Compton. Uh, then I didn't know it very well, but I just looked like a pretty cool orange building, so I moved in. Um, you know, my neighbors were a bunch of crips. They were all pretty cool people. Uh, I used to go to their parties and stuff. And um, then I moved up to Venice, California. I, it was a really great area then to Marina Del Rey. So it's just, you know, you find yourself moving up in these like areas, these neighborhoods. And like, that's where I would just hang out because it's, it's California and it's a beautiful place to come home to, you know, by the beach. Um, you know, I'd gone back to New York to visit, but I was already here and so wrapped up in just being by the beach. Like I hated leaving to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. There are times I didn't show up to like, signings like once to Spain I didn't show up because it was just a nice weekend and I'd been to Spain a million times before then um I didn't show up like to Ohio one weekend because it was a beautiful fourth of July weekend I wanted to go ride motorcycle that weekend so it just it's kind it kind of sets you back in a way but it's California yeah you gotta enjoy it I'll show up now though anywhere yes (laughs) that's true I would well yeah well thank you for showing up for our interview today (laughs) I appreciate that welcome glad there wasn't a bike ride or something that took place yeah damn it's so nice out. it is nice out today but it's the type Uh, of this is what happens is how people get sick so it's like 60 degrees out what is it like uh it's probably about 18 today 18 celsius 19 cell 18 celsius or 15 yeah 15 celsius and um, people will go outside with a short sleeve shirt on or like a light jacket 
And then tomorrow it'll be back to like 12 Celsius or eight Celsius, you know, and this is how people get sick. Well, I can tell you, nobody's riding bikes here. It is snowing in Toronto mm-hmm. right now. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no going to. Uh, so cool. So this is, so this is, uh, this is awesome where we're at right now. Um, you're working feature dancing, everything's going great for you. Um, this is, this is the part that like really, when I was listening to interviews, uh, reading stuff, <laughs> you, you intersect here with Bubba Ray Dudley. Yeah. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. What, what how does that happen? Awesome. Tell me all about that. Cause yeah. this is, I'm, I like just a little, a little peek behind the curtain here. I'm a wrestling Mark. Like I love everything <laughs> about pro wrestling, the ECW, like end of the nineties era. Oh. was the coolest time and like just knowing you're a part of that like i have a million questions to pick your brain and the dudleys are just le- legends from that era so I, I need to know how how you guys came together how you got into ecw everything that happened during that era sure i, I mean one one really sad thing about um being a part of that business and loving the people and the business so much is the death that surrounds it so one of my closest friends, when I was working for Rob Black, he had XPW Wrestling. And um, he started that whole thing. And he started bringing in a lot of old ECW wrestlers mm. that like the Pitbulls were there. I became friends with them. And then um, I became good friends with Big Dick Dudley. So he and I, we'd like mess with people really bad. I took him to uh, an audition for the Gladiators TV show. <laughs> this is really fucked up what happened. Now you're going to like this. So I just, I just brought him there and he starts running around, literally bouncing people onto the like power, like power bombing them. I'm like, Oh my God. So they had him leave. And then, you know, I said to the woman, well, what do you expect? You have a bunch of posers here. Well, I just thought it was nice for people who haven't been on TV. I said, well, then tell them to go fucking bake muffins or something. (laughs) Don't do like physical sports, but he passed away, you know, and I spoke to him like the day before he died, um, which is really sad. But he's sort of the reason I I mean, it would be between him and Rob Black because Rob put me into ECW. He put me in front of them, not knowing that I would actually jump ship and go there. Um, and then. I wanted to go back so bad because it was like a drug, I guess, and. Big Dick Dudley, who's his real name was Alex Rizzo. He he's like, look, I'll call I'll call Bubba. And he did. And then that's when the whole talk started. Then I just slowly but surely kind of jumped ship and didn't say anything. Um, Hey, man, Rob Black. I'm looking for police. Hey, hey, stop, 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 stop. Yeah. Can I just get her phone number? Okay, I like I like Cracker Barrel. I like barbecue. So why not? (laughs) Um, Yeah, it was fun. So contrary to popular belief, like I got myself in and it was, it was actually, if you really want to think about it, I mean, if Rob didn't put me there or suggest to use me on that somehow, what, if he didn't put me there in front of them, I never would have been there. So, so, so you were talking about, you kind of jump ship from XPW to ECW. Let, let's go back. Let's talk about XPW for a sec. Um, Rob Black on that, and mm-hmm. just what 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 years were you there? Do you re- do you remember yeah, roughly? In the inception. In the inception. So inception, yeah. So nineteen. That was the name of the pay per view, actually. To the uh, name of the the home video, Inception. So nineteen ninety nine, and uh, nine yeah ninety nine. What if it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think he, too, was a wrestling fan. They just had the rebirth of XPW. It was mm-hmm. really good, by the way. So I think they have a lot of high hopes for it. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen that they've been back. They have some great, like, I've seen um, Brian Cage is there, Willie Max. Yeah. Really, they have some really good guys in there. But for, like, for maybe you some of the... You never know. You ex- never know. Hey, and maybe, and maybe Jasmine St. Clair. There, it is, you know, don't... Don't... Uh, that's yeah. I mean, anything's possible. Anything's I mean, possible. We've been talking and, you know, Rob's a different person now. And mm-hmm. so am I. And he's, you know, I think it's, a, it would be really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, plus I felt, I always felt like he was too good to be like directing porn. I, I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, what is, like, what are you trying to escape? Like a bad haircut? Like why, why the fuck are you here? You know, like go, you could, you could do something better with yourself. It's, it's fun. And, so um, 
sorry so 99 oh. you were there and like for for any like younger people tuning in that is the we, we're at a a peak in wrestling right now this is like stone cold is going wild in wwf there's the nwo and wcw ecw is like it hitting its stride it, you're you're here in the absolute golden era yeah. of wrestling. What what was what was what was XPW like then? It was it, for anybody who doesn't know, it was kind of a, it was almost the West Coast version of ECW where they were oh, Philly. Yeah, so. This is LA, and we're cranking it up. Yeah, and there's nothing like that. There was nothing like that in LA, and there really isn't anything like it now, wrestling wise. Not even AEW. So I really hope that. Um, I hope that he comes back because I feel as though he'd have a really strong chance of uh, filling in that niche. Like mm -hmm. AEW is great. It's came up way too fast and that's not good because things that don't really crawl for us for a while, not for a long time. You just, it just doesn't happen. I don't know. I just think like it, it reminds me of WCW, mm -hmm. but I could see Rob coming in and like taking all the hardcore fans, like the hardcore fan base, like those that really like the cool stuff, not yeah. like pre pre um, perforated tables like they do at WWE and ECW, like they broke those tables. We oh, yeah. really broke them. But um, Rob was an interesting character. Did you see Dark uh, Dark Side of the Ring? I was going to ask you if you've seen it. Yeah, I, I have. Yeah, I it. turned it off. I think that they're. Um, I thought it was really cheap. And they said some really stupid things. It is what it is. Rob is Rob was who he was. But mm -hmm. if it wasn't the guys that sat there like saying all that shit about him, I think what they forgot is one thing. If it wasn't for Rob, they never would have been on that show. They probably yeah. would have been sitting at home um, with their fat, nasty wives, stuffing their faces with pastrami. Yeah, yeah. So, XPW yeah. was very homegrown. Yes. So those guys, I mean, there are a lot of guys that were very grateful to be there. I was grateful. Um, but those two that went on there and, you know, you can't accuse someone of having someone's whatever. I don't know if the guy had his dick cut off or his fucking thumb, whatever the hell it was. You know why? You know, I don't think Rob's that kind of person. Um, and secondly, you shouldn't be fucking around with someone's like the boss's wife. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was a very, uh, it was a dark you know, side episode. For sure. <laughs> it was exciting. Like, what were you thinking that you were, I, yeah, I would never, I mean, where, where, where's the loyalty, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and she shouldn't have been doing that, but you know, it's like, I get it. And, uh, but I don't think he did anything and I could, uh, I don't think they portrayed him in a good light. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he was the underdog and most things, that are peculiar like that will always have that great following. So he's going to come back. I think he's going to come back stronger than before. That's awesome. Well, that's, there's, there's nothing, um, there's no downside to having more great wrestling promotions and we need that. No, iron one has sharpens that. iron kind of thing. Well, they have the bar wrestling. Have you seen the bar wrestling? Bar wrestling's aye, aye, yeah. Like what the hell is that? That's just, that's when just it's, flat out. That's no, like no ring. Like that. Yeah. It can be, it can that's be a little, stupid. it's a little strange. A little? Have you done that? Oh no, no, I've, I haven't been to one yet, but I've seen it on the internet. And that you've never participated in is what? No, I'm no, no, no. Okay, I just want to make sure you seem too smart to do that. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, so, uh, what we're talking about XBW, the dark side. I was actually curious. This was something I wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. um, you you've been on Dark Side of the '90s, but they didn't have you on the dark side of the ring episode about XPW, which you direct, is it different producers? Is it? I don't know who it is. I don't even know. I was on. I don't know why that happened. Till my friend called me. She's like, Oh, guess what? I'm like, I don't know what you want <laughs> a million fucking dollars. What? <laughs> um, then she's like, no, I just saw you. I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, look, I, said, I don't have time for this. So I hung up on her. Then I, um, I, I turned it on. I'm like, Oh, fuck. I thought that's really awesome that they had me open it. I fucking love it. I think that's awesome. That is so cool. I mean, so, I don't know who else was, was who else was on dark side of the, I don't think like any of the girls were on dark side of the ring. Not really. No. Yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't have, I don't think I would have given them the narrative for Rob they'd Black. Want. Mm -hmm. They'd want. Yeah. Mm, it's interesting. I'm, um, it's, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually really familiar with Rob because um, I, I, you know, there's a Canadian TV show, Kenny versus Spenny. Have you ever heard of that? Huh? 
Kenny vs. Spenny. It's a Canadian TV show. No, it, do, no. It's, it doesn't. It's, um, it's these two guys. They do like a competition against each other. And like the loser has to do a humiliation. But one of the guys made a side movie and it was called Confessions of a Porn Addict. And he played a, a guy addicted to porn. And the guy, he, the whole premise of the movie was that Rob Black stole his girlfriend to come work for him. Hey, man, Rob Black. I'm looking for Felice Shea. Hey, hey, stop, 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 stop. Jeez. Can I just get her phone number? Get in. Sorry, I'm sorry. So Rob was in it and everything that was going down at the time was him kind of like, it was while he was kind of challenging the media and challenging the government and that. So, we, yeah. like, so oh, I, I really saw a lot of that. And it, when I saw the XPW episode, I was like, this is the same guy that that's crazy. So it was he, he's he's really uh, he's got a crazy story. Well, I was living in Europe at the time while that was going on when he had that case against Janet Ashcraft Ashcroft. Um, that was something else, man. I mean, that just that blew my mind. That really blew my mind that that was going to happen. And I just I was hoping nothing would happen to him because I felt bad. But I guess maybe that's what split him up with it. I, I, I don't know, but it happened. Then, mm-hmm. you know, he's rebranded him. He hasn't really rebranded himself. He just has. He's just refined. It's it's crazy. All that was happening while XPW. I had no clue. I'm like, what the fuck? I don't know if I was in Europe or I was working for Jimmy Hart at that point. No, I was wrestling. That's right. No, I was still here and they still had that go. Yeah, I was working somewhere else, but I was like, whoa, I just couldn't believe it. (laughs) So your your uh, big ECW debut was November to remember. Living dangerously. Living dangerously. I'm sorry. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah. Yeah, So living dangerously. And um, you've got to work directly with like some amazing people with Paul Heyman. Um, like, can you tell us about so, like that oh. night? And like, you also took an insane bump. Oh, which, oh, that, yeah. The rhino power bomb. Yeah. I found out like 10 minutes before the show, I was doing that. I'm like, okay. What? Then Paul's like, do you feel comfortable with doing this? Uh, I, I, I could never say a bad thing about Paul. I think he's, uh, he did a lot for me. I know that sounds weird. Hold on. <coughs> My allergies. He did like a lot for me. That's awesome. Cause we, yeah, we always hear like as wrestling fans, just what a genius he is. And that, that's cool to hear that he's really that guy yeah. behind the scenes. He's funny and he was fun to work with. And I feel as though he knew how to work with like shy talent and with all talent. And he wasn't like discriminating towards anyone really and gave everyone a chance. Like he saw some good in everything, no matter what it was. Now, when you say shy talent, is that, is that you? Were you would you consider yeah, yourself oh, a shy? Yeah, I was a guy. Really? Yeah. You, yeah, I had, oh my God. Can you tell I had stage fright? Yeah. When I was cutting the promo. You, the you first couldn't, time, no. I could, uh, just because I know myself, but that living dangerously pay-per-view promo. Oh God. Yeah. I, I was scared. I was, first of all, I was in a ring. You have thousands of, tens of thousands of people in an arena. It's not what I expected because you grow up watching that stuff. From the outside of the the other side of the ring, you never dream of being on the inside of the ring. Then it happens. And then you remember like what it's like to be a fan for a second, like watching Snuka and um, like going to matches with grandma. And my grandmother would yell at wrestlers on TV <laughs> like she'd watch TV shows and yell at them. So uh, that was pretty amazing. Um, but you just I think it's the people's reactions is what fuels, you know, fuels the adrenaline. Just like when you say shocking things on TV, it's and people's reactions with those dumb fucking morons uh, in the audience who have no life. Um, you know, you you shock and outrage them. You get that reaction. It's the same adrenaline to keep going more and more. That is so cool. Well, you um, you you didn't just jump into the ring. You you had some very serious training. Yeah, um, I was legends. Trained. Yeah. Mondo Guerrero trained me um sue sexton like they trained me and mm-hmm. then you know usually day of a show we'd go through some things not a pile driver of course um but i was very fortunate you know the first day that i did go to ecw i had spike dudley helping me and bubba and divan uh taking a stone cold stunner uh when i went to nwa i was fortunate enough to have ryan shamrock and ken shamrock uh help me with my promo beforehand because I wasn't sure. I was really scared going there in a microphone by myself, uh, but I was fine once I got there. 
I think that's, I think that's yeah, awesome. It was fun. They were all really great people, you know, mm-hmm. but that, 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 let's just, just so anybody who, uh, like, I feel it's so funny. There's so much to like pick up. I feel like there's just little tidbits everywhere, but that's, uh, Mato Guerrero from the, like the Guerrero family. Yeah. And Sue great. Sexton, who is an original, um, women of wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. So, she's so you, amazing. Real, like real legendary people. You, you didn't just happen to step in because of your past fame and do a little, do a quick promo <laughs> or you were, you were, you were trained and like, you took some crazy bumps and like, I, I think it's, I just think it's awesome. I think they out, they banned that pile driver. And I can see why, because looking back at that, I mean, like the nutcracker sweep, that's fine. When Balls Mahoney did those to me, like it was fine doing that, taking power bombs, but choke slams, but that like anything could happen once you're up that far, because don't forget they have hot on them, that oil. Mm -hmm. and You could easily slip and slide off of someone. And it's just, it's all timing. You know, everything's just timing in that business. And, you know, you don't know, um, you don't know what could happen. What if, you know, your hands slide or what if your nails dig into his, you know, what if you kick him in the face? So crazy. So, so for anybody who's not quite taken in how, how insane this is, you took a move that guys with 20 plus years of training aren't allowed to take in the WWE anymore. Really? You took it off the top ropes, like, <gasps> and you had, you had had a few in-ring experiences at the time. You had some training that. But it, it, you took a move that like they just won't do anymore. Why? I, I don't. I, oh, it's just, paralyzed. Never yeah, mind. it's on their band. Yeah, I, yeah. I believe after um, I think after Stone Cold got hurt, they stopped doing it. What did he? What happened to him now? Owen Hart. That was back. That was way back then. Oh. In the night. Yeah, I think that's when they stopped doing it. But ECW oh. was still doing it, and you took it off the top ropes. Yeah, and I have like a fraction of his weight. I probably weigh as much as his arm or his left thigh or something. <laughs> as a as just a, like a diehard fan what what was the is, it's such a general question but if you could if you could explain it it'd be awesome what were what was the atmosphere in like the locker room like back in like those ecw days because i think fans think it was just you know just guys are going through the tables backstage and it's all apart yeah, what all it was it as wild as we believe no. or no, 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 no. Nothing <laughs> sure, like that. okay sure now um if that's what they want to think fine see that's the beauty of <laughs> this existing before the internet, mm-hmm. you know, cause you'll never know. Yeah. And I could sit here and tell you how it was and someone else could tell you something else, but there's no internet. So you're never really going to know, but it was, um, it was, it was friendly and it was like a big family. People weren't putting themselves through tables. <laughs> People were talking, People were playing jokes on each other. Not like how WWE does it in a very harmful culture. Um, you know, when I when I heard that who was it, the Undertaker used to make fun of Rene Dupree because he didn't want to drink or because he was French, I thought that's just flat out like disgusting. Mm. And, you know, when they just we didn't do things like that. Um, if he came in the back and disrespected one of us, that's a different story. Definitely. Like well, the I'd... mass transit incident and all that. Oh, well, that, that it's that's actually something I wanted to touch on with you. Yeah, as well. that was horrible. Because I know, um, I know at one point when you, so later on, you end up having your own wrestling promotion. Yeah. And you, I know, I, I, I just from interviews and stuff, I've kind of pieced it together, but I believe you had New Jack, rest in peace, a legend. You had him booked for one of your shows. He no showed. And then there was a bit of friction with you guys. No, yeah, I know it was done and over with after. That's, um, but and then yeah. I've, I've seen later that you guys have completely patched stuff. I saw you do a really nice tribute for him when he passed. And it's, I don't think he ever will get, the proper um, recognition. I mean, it's New Jack. Yeah, mm-hmm. he said his shit about me, whatever. It's like, okay, New Jack, whatever. Uh, he's a good person to put his body on the line for this business. And, you know, I don't know why WWE didn't have uh, a tribute for him. Did he go into WWE at one point or no? I, I believe he did some work there. I he think might it have was had a couple of bouts there. Yeah. Yes. But they never gave him that. And no. if there was no new Jack, there never would have been any hardcore wrestling. Same with Sandman or Balls Mahoney. Mm-hmm. And I still have like a lot of vintage ECW t shirts, like the one with like him and Sabu. It's New Jack, Sabu, Dreamer, and Taz, like in the street with the chairs. Oh, yeah. 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 Still. I have a lot of vintage shirts, but I just feel as though, uh, yeah, I had my own thing. 
yeah, that's really, the whole thing is just sad and just, he should have gotten more out of this business. And I wish that, you know, I wish that he got more than people thought he deserved. Uh, Cause he was really just a funny, happy go lucky kind of guy. Oh, that's so cool. I, I was, I, that was, amazing. We, we did like fat Albert invitations. Hey, hey, hey. But <laughs> You don't want to fuck. You didn't want to fuck with him. And his wife's really a lovely person and his kids. I feel bad for them, you know, and uh, there's another wrestler that worked for me named Rock and Rebel. Um, I don't know what happened. I just I know he shot his wife and then himself. I don't know what led to that type of thing. You know, I think COVID brought out the worst in people, Mm -hmm. especially in relationships or marriages. You know, I don't know what the divorce rate is, but um, yeah, I just. It's that's a really I think that's the saddest death in a while has been New Jack and Balls Mahoney. Yeah. Uh, people like New Jack made the locker room what it was just smiles and fun. Same with Sandman. And, you know, they just do their thing. Yeah. Cause, and I think it's really cool that things were you guys patched things up and you got to share some cool. That, I, that was one thing I wanted to ask if you could share kind of a cool memory with him. He was actually supposed to do the show. I talked to him right before he passed. Like <sighs> weeks, weeks before, actually, it was. It's, I was geeking out just talking to him in the DM because that was the guy I really grew up loving. And yeah, I was, I was hoping that you could share some cool memories of him. Yeah, so thank you for did, that. It was all the like Fat Albert stuff. And he like he worked with a T-shirt company or had some T-shirt thing going on. He had he gave me Fat Albert shirts. Um, but I feel like I just I hope that, you know, I have a new Jack OG T-shirt I bought. And uh, yeah, that's just. You know, it, it, it's funny when he was using music that we don't even have the license to <laughs> use. You know, it's like, are you really going to say something to him? Yeah. You know, but he was one of the people that really deserved to have more success. And uh, I was just, you know, that's someone who put his body on the line. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And Balls Mahoney, too. I mean. You, you, you'll never find anything better or more gangster than them yeah. in this lifetime. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, RIP to a couple of real ECW yeah. legends and that that's really cool that you shared some memories. So thank you for that. Welcome. Um, let me, let me ask you, like we, we've been kind of touching you in NWA, TNA, XPW, ECW. Do you have like a memory you're most proud of or something you think of right away when people ask you about your wrestling career? They're just all bunched up into one big ball of happiness. So cool. Like I have this feeling, you know, kind of like when you die and like you just kind of go through that whole montage of the better time, like all the happiness in your life. So obviously it'd be ever it's like one big God, everything's like yeah. one big ball to me. And I think wrestling would be a big part of that, you know, because my mom watched wrestling. She used to come to shows. Um it was just fun. I, I just, I don't know. It, there are so many, I don't know if they're favorite moments. I think they're all favorite moments. Awesome. Um, I think, you know, yeah, they were all favorite moments. Oh, it was awesome. funny meeting Missy Hyatt when she came to work for XPW. I'm like, what's she doing here? And she was a blonde. That's how I remembered her. But she showed up, she had like hair, pro- she probably, yes, her hair was kind of like mine. And, um, she just dropped that gorgeous. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I was very curious, like during the, the era that you were in wrestling and like the, it matches up with the attitude era. Like you would have been perfect over there. Was yeah. there, did you, did, was there talks of you going to WWF? Um, or? At one point my name was on their radar. Yeah. So I don't know what happened. I think had I've gone there at that point, um, I don't know how they would have used me. I don't, I don't know. And you had more know. more control in ECW, XPW, kind of towards your character. and Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't care how they would have used me, but I don't know how they would have. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they would have just taken me and just put me in this. I don't know. I have no idea. Do you have any, like, dream match scenarios? Because I, I pick, do you remember um, WCW Road Wild, where they would do the, the all the bikes? Yeah. That I, that's where I see you as a dream match kind of thing. Yeah, that would have been fun. Yeah, I, I did something with them once. And then because of the whole Ted Turner Bible Belt shit, 
and their stockholders. It's just like, it's so stupid. It's all, it's entertainment. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only person I probably would want to work with is probably the Godfather or um, as Papa Shango or like Val Venus. Val Venus would have been, that's a, so funny. That's that exactly what I was Oh, that's awesome. It's um, funny but, because not, you're saying the Ted Tur- Ted Turner, like the whole, you know, yeah, people, they did It's nowadays that that would be a huge advantage to have uh, built in. Yeah built in credits right people know you from another place it's, it's just yeah. funny how everything changes and well, yeah i don't like how they've done all that stuff with wwe and like it brings me to the whole thing with jazz when i was talking to someone earlier i mean they didn't know they didn't know how to use her the right way like paul Heyman did um but you know you never say never to these things and uh yeah you know that's it and i mean maybe uh maybe there will be an xpw return i don't know I love it. I mean, but, they are having that California pay-per-view. So just, you don't know. Keep your eyes peeled, everybody. Yeah. That's so cool. Can you, um, what, what what would you say was maybe like the craziest? Was it taking that pile driver off the top ropes or what What was kind of, was there ever anything you were worried about? Any Because yeah, you seem to take it. Yeah, I was, I was like, Nicole, oh, I was seeing what? Yeah, I was really gonna say back. you seem very cool and laid back with everything. Oh, ten, ten minutes before, yeah, I'll take the pile driver. Yeah, no problem. I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I'm like, all right. Then he even said, look, do you feel comfortable taking them up? I'm like, yeah. I mean, look, you don't know until you try. It. Uh, I think the scariest thing was Nicole Bass giving me a fucking choke slam, and rest her soul. Uh, you know, she didn't have a lot of training. She's just a big woman. She was like the different uh, version of China. And, you know, she uh, she sprained my ribs because she had no clue what she was doing. Then she's like in the locker room with me. Are you OK? I'm like, just get the fuck off of me because I could still kill you if I want to. Like, just go. <sighs> but that was just like the only time anything really insane happened. I mean, don't forget, like I wrestled in the UK as well. And those rings are very stiff in Europe. Um, they're very different than here i was trained on a stiff ring as well we used a boxing ring sometimes as well because the ring sue sexton had was outside then when i was training with mondo guerrero a lot of those mexican high flyers they were training down with the ring with me down in santa fe springs so i was like he trained me to wrestle matches but because of my size and that's fine i was always i was always a manager which was totally fine by me i had no problem with that i think it's awesome is there any um is there anything else that like maybe you didn't get to do in wrestling that you wanted to do? No, not yeah. really. nothing, nothing that stands out. No, no, no steel cage match or no, <laughs> nothing, nothing on the checklist. That's awesome. Well, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe there's something coming in XPW if, if, maybe. if there's a return. And yeah, I mean, I would totally, I mean, that would be fun to manage someone there. Um, you know, he has this really pretty girl that's doing the commentating, uh, this girl, cat martini like she looks like someone who'd be fun to feud with if you came back are you a face or a heel a heel god of course Crazy. okay perfect <laughs> what kind of question are we asking here <laughs> that's that's more that's more fun for you yeah that's awesome i always was a heel i never got over as a baby face i don't know if it's because of my hair my dark hair or something you know yep um yeah because even an xpw they did the same thing. They, it was a heel. Well, that's, that's, that's so cool. I mean, this has been, this has been a ton of fun running through your career. I do. I have a couple, I we've, yeah. we've jumped around a little, I, I've got a couple of things I wanted yeah. to like, just touch on maybe what you're doing now. And, oh, yeah, sure. mm-hmm. um, so you have, you're doing your, you're a one woman show. I mean, COVID's kind of made everything a little, mm-hmm. a little crazy. You've got your podcast. Um, can you just kind of tell everybody what, what, what's the day to day like for Jasmine St. Clair now? Well, I was just sitting here with my kitten a while ago. Um, yeah, he's just sitting there now. He's a little black cat named Enzo. Uh, then I just want to like go on the, just have the show. And then my podcast is Crazy Train Podcast. It's Crazy with a K, Crazy Train with Jasmine St. Clair. It's every Wednesdays. So it covers all types of topics and issues. Uh, I have all kinds of guests. Uh, then on certain days, I'll just be interviewed by my co-host. Um, Shout out to Greg. Yeah, Greg. How do, oh, Greg. How do you know Greg? Uh, he's actually, he follows the show that we've talked a couple of times. He's a nice guy. Uh, 
I love Greg. Yeah. He's like a, a godsend to me. He's a genius. Like mm-hmm. he totally was the one that put together uh, like how we should do the podcast. Plus he's a metalhead, So it works out perfectly fine. Um, I think he likes it when I have hot girls on the show. I bet she does. <laughs> Many girls. Yeah. He like, he, he's, he's an interesting person, Greg. I think he's very smart. Uh, so the whole idea is that then um, it's the one woman show. Then I'm just acting. I'm in my last year of a Meisner class. Uh, I booked a film called Road to Terrazzo, which shoots soon. We just, we're still, we are shooting a film, Daughters of Dolomite. And then that gets picked up again sooner than later. Someone in the film had a baby or whatever, but the thing is just in real life. Uh, then I just did a TikTok commercial. Um, and then, yeah, it's just, I always get auditions and stuff in my inbox. I just get more picky about what I want to do because my game plan is to move back to Europe at some point and just work on shows there instead. It's, it's funny. You've done, you've done so much. I feel like I'm just me personally, I'm, I'm stuck on your wrestling career. Um, yeah, thank you. I feel like, I feel like my buddies are going to make fun of me. Be like, how come we didn't ask her more about the adult industry? And um, like, and I skipped over like your movie stuff. There's, there's so much to cover. Um, oh, that stuff. Yeah. That was like, you know, that was like less than, was it two years of my life? I mean, I met some, I was, it was a very different era then of adult and way more glamorous. Like the shit they do now, it looks really pathetic. Well, you were a star in the day of stars, right? That's when they had them. Yeah. That's, I think that's so cool. And it was fun, you know, and then uh, I had one person from that business on my show currently, who's very well-spoken and it was a wrestling fan as well. So it was fun. And, you know, he explained to me, like, how things are now. It's so different, you know. I wouldn't want to be a part of that. Um, you know, back then, people, you know, you had contracts. You had contract girls. They had all this money flying around. And uh, it was a whole other era, you know. Um, and some of the girls that were still the smarter ones from that era are, uh, you know, they do well. Like, Lisa Ann has her own podcast and her gambling thing going on. Uh, so if you want to place a bet, you'd be in good hands with her. Um, <laughs> you guys had a great, a great episode together. She was funny. Mm. She, she's great. I love her. And then I'm um, like, Tara Patrick is doing her own thing. And you just people do their own things like smarter girls. And unfortunately, Jenna uh, Jameson is now faced with a uh, Gillian something disease. So she can't walk right now. Jeez. So we're hoping like uh, she has a speedy recovery because you could walk, but then you got to go through physical therapy. My old publicist had it. And I, uh, I guess she has, I don't know how she got it. I don't know if it's a hereditary thing probably, but um, uh, yeah, I'm going to reach out to her sometime soon and see how she's doing. She was in the hospital the last time I checked. Uh, At least it's not COVID. Yeah. Yep. Hey, there's, <laughs> there's, there's one plus. Um, let's, let's, let's talk real quick about your, your, um, your mainstream movie career. You've yeah. done some awesome films. You've worked, got to work with National Lampoons. Uh, what, what was it's funny? I, I actually saw that movie back in the day, Dorm Days too. I saw it when it came out. I had the movie channel and I read, I watched that. And uh, I was, I was, I was. I'll be honest. I was impressed with your performance back then for sure. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I would not even really take acting classes then. Um, I got to like my favorite. One of my favorite TV shows is Columbo, and the guy that played my husband in it, Richard Real, was in a few episodes of Columbo, That's and so in cool. Office Space. Um, we didn't have any table reads, did we? No, we didn't have table reads. I was really new to the whole thing. Uh, you know, then I just, you know, I worked on other things after I worked on a film with Ice-T, Three Days Rising. Another movie I had just came out on Amazon called Ava, A Twist in the Road. I worked on the last season of The Deuce with James Franco. Um, I did an offspring video. I've done like, I've done things here and there. So, you know, I always book things. So it's not a problem. And um, now I'm just doing last year of an acting class. Part of it was on zoom. So, uh, it was Manage, weird. Yeah. yeah then I'm, re- I'm going to resume my dialect classes because I would like to go and work in England for a bit. Amazing. What is, is that your number one goal right now to book, to book movies, film TV, and just my one woman show. Yeah. Amazing. Well, you've got, you, podcast. <laughs> you've, uh, you've done some really amazing things. You, you are working on some really amazing things and I hope, uh, I hope everything just keeps working out great for you. Thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. Uh, well, uh, Jazz, no, I appreciate us talking for sure. Thank no, you. Th- thank you. This has been really cool. Um, I, I am a big fan of your podcast, so I enjoy that you took the time to come out and, and chat with us for a bit. Is there anything um, that you want to touch on before we wrap up here? 
Yeah. So everyone, if you could just rate and review my podcast too, and Gavin's, I'd appreciate it. Um, it's Crazy Train with a K, Crazy Train with Jasmine St. Clair. So I am sending out the gift bags. I did finally send out the gift bags again because some of them were like hijacked by homeless people. Um, yeah, feel free to rate and review for a free gift card and a gift bag. Um, and what else? Then I don't know. I just, you know, follow me on Instagram and on Facebook to it and Twitter, which is Jasmine St. Clair. Jasmine doesn't have an E, Claire does. And Crazy Train Podcast, of course. And just, you know, stay tuned for everything and, uh, no, COVID's not going to last forever. No, it'll be it'll be back at Rock and the One Woman Show soon. We'll be yeah. sure to put all that information up in the description, put it on the screen, and that the, the the podcast is awesome. You get a really cool you. Uh, you get really cool guests from from the adult industry to metal to even just your stories, like talking with Greg about <laughs> about making your way from wrestling into everything you've done. I think it's I think it's awesome. You've had oh, a crazy journey, and he cracks been, me up. Though. He, he is great. No, he's like, so what do you want to, what, what, what you want to talk about? I'm like, he sounds like a therapist almost. <laughs> <laughs> that is almost what this is, right? I mean, we're just long, long yeah. form talking and working it out. Right. Wow. Whoever would have thought. <laughs> yeah. This, this has been so cool. It's uh, I, uh, I really like grew up watching a bunch of stuff you did and this has been, I'm geeking out a little bit. This has been really cool talking to you. Thank you. And I, I really, I can't, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to come on today and, and speak with us. Well, thank you. And, you know, if anyone wants to get a weird kind of fame, which is the one woman show brought to Canada, um, you know, definitely like, let me know. You find me on social media because I'd love to put the show there. <laughs> Promoters who are watching this, we, we do have a nice, like, um, like stand up group i think and i think there might be somebody who's checking us out if there's a, any promoters who might be checking us out you book a, a strange kind of fame jasmine st Clair's one woman show yes. i'm sorry a weird kind of fame okay. yes yeah okay. perfect and let's let's yeah that's awesome this has been a ton of fun i can't thank you enough for joining me today well thank you very much i had a blast uh so this is episode 23 the gavin with gavin podcast thank you very much to my guest jasmine st Clair, for joining us shout out to 1990 studios Thank you for tuning in, everybody.